What's going on, everyone? Welcome to a Friday edition of Back Your Play with Q. As always, I'm your host, Rich Quinones, hashtag BYT, Twitter, uh, social media, IG, at Rich Q on Q, the YouTube channel, Rich Q on Q. And of course, uh, Friday edition from our good friends over at One With Life Tequila. Check them out online, onewithlifetequila.com. Ali M. Ali Moniki does a great job as a co-host, uh, Nothing But Locks podcast, part of Zen Sports, kind enough to join us every week as she typically does. She knows I'm fighting through the voice. Got the little hot toddy. Might have a little shot of tequila after we're done. Maybe during the spot. Who knows? But um, how are you, Allie? I'm good. It's a good Friday. It's raining here in Southern California, but otherwise got a full weekend coming up of college uh, basketball, some yep. NBA. So looking forward to it. All right. Yeah. Let's uh, you want to hit on the association first on a couple of yeah, games? Yeah, let's do the NBA first. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's hit on a little NBA. Um, and, and I think you know, when you start to look at some of these games, let's start with the obvious right now. We saw the move Durant going to Phoenix. Phoenix sitting right now at plus 450, pretty much the shortest odds in the Western Conference, third shortest to win it all. You got Boston, Milwaukee, Memphis, Denver, Philadelphia 76ers. Before we get to some of these games, um, right now in your estimation, odds wise, who's your favorite to win the NBA title and who would you take a flyer on right now? So I hate to say it because I hate going with favorites, but when it comes to the Eastern Conference, I think Boston and Milwaukee is the way to go. I lean Boston. I think when Giannis is healthy, he's just the most dominant player on the court in the Eastern Conference. I think you look at the addition of Jay Crowder at the deadline, that just adds some more depth to their bench. It's That's, that's something they were missing last year. Yeah. Don't forget, they had some key injuries against Boston. Middleton went down. I think in a rematch, Milwaukee wins that seven-game series. The Eastern Conference, I'm still going to have to ride with Denver until they prove me otherwise. I think the Joker, along with Jamal Murray, that's just a tandem you can't beat. I will say, doing my podcast yesterday with my co-host, Robert Kowalski, he's heavy on the Clippers, not just because they got Russell Westbrook, but he thinks that if Paul George stays healthy, if Kawhi Leonard stays healthy, that's a team that you have to watch out for in the Western Conference. Uh I don't necessarily agree with him. I think that the Clippers are just way too injury prone. We've yeah. seen it for years with Kawhi. We've seen it for years with Paul George. And I think Russell Westbrook really at this point is just a cancer for whatever team he goes to. Yeah, I saw they were plus one, uh, I think plus um, 1,100 before the move, yeah. plus 1,100 after the move. So that right. kind of tells you how much of the needle he moves. Uh, Denver plus 750, not bad odds in the Western Converse. But I agree with you. I still think um, Milwaukee, Boston, because I love the backcourt of Tatum and Brown. And, you know, there was yep. talk they were maybe even shopping uh, Brown. Tatum, I think, is a stud. And then, you know, again, let's also not forget Smart, who's a very good player on the defensive end. So I do like those two teams. Uh, as far as the games tonight, Friday night, not a bad slate. I kind of uh, highlighted a couple. I'll get your thoughts, and then you tell me where you're leaning. Uh, Cleveland, Atlanta. And the reason I bring up that game to you is because anytime – you have a coach that uh, coach guys up and then all of a sudden it starts to go south and then he gets fired. I kind of look to see what the team does going right. forward. And that's the case with Atlanta. Uh, and they just got rid of Nate McMillan. They're looking potentially at Quinn Snyder. We saw the run he had for years with Utah, close to 400 wins and six straight playoff appearances. Trey Young still putting up big time points. But here's a team in a in the Atlanta Hawks, 29 and 30, Cavs are 30 and 24. The Hawks went to the Eastern Conference Finals in 2021. They're still trying to figure it out. It's sitting at a pick them right now. Yeah, and full disclosure, I am not a Trey Young fan. Even when he was at Oklahoma, I just didn't like his game. I think he takes way too many errant shots. He can score like crazy when he's hot. Don't get me wrong. He's just, I, I don't like his attitude with the game. However, tonight, if I'm putting my money, I agree with you. I'm taking Atlanta. I love your I love your theory. Go with the team that just fired their head coach. I actually would take the over in Young's points tonight. I think that he's just going to be on fire. There was a lot of bad headlines about him that he just yep. constantly clashed with Nate McMillan. I think that that Young is definitely going to go over the total. And I, I like Cleveland. I really do like their team. I'm a big fan of Donovan Mitchell. But in this case scenario, I have to go where my head says. And I'm going with Atlanta with you as well. Uh, Late tip off Houston and Golden State. And again, the reason I bring this up is because you look at Houston having a really horrible season, 13 and 45. I think they're five and 25, five and 26 Um, on the road. They dropped nine and 11. So we always think about leaning these really bad teams. And they're also coming off a 37 point thumping against the Thunder. 
Yeah, I, I would lean with the Houston in the points as well. Listen, Golden State's not the same team with Steph Curry, not on the floor. We saw it last night in their loss to the L.A. Lakers, who really is another bad team. I know everyone's talking about this new look L.A. Lakers. I don't right. think D'Angelo <laughs> Russell moves the thread in that, to be honest with you, even though I do like D'Angelo Russell. So 10 points, I think that's way too much for Golden State to lay. They might be probably tired still last night after having a big game against the Lakers. So Houston with the points, I agree with you. That's another hot play. Uh, you mentioned Milwaukee is one of the teams to uh, beat out of the Eastern Conference, 41 and 17. Very good home mark of 24 and 5. Uh, kind of a curious line here with Miami coming in 32 27, even though they dropped four of seven. That line sitting right around one, one and a half, Milwaukee at home. Yeah, you know, yeah, I believe Giannis is still out. So I, I'm not totally. Uh, surprised about that line I would kind of take Miami on the road I know that Milwaukee is just so good at home but you still have Eric Spolstra as Miami's yep. head coach I think he coaches them right they listen they have a lot to play for Miami Milwaukee knows that they're going to be either the one or two seed they know Giannis is coming back I wouldn't even be surprised if they sit Middleton or Holiday for an extended period during this game so this is the one where I would not only take the one point with Miami I just think they win this game outright Interesting. And then uh, one more for you, the Nets and the Bulls. Bulls lay in two. You know, I still try to figure out this Nets team and I try to keep my my uh, fandom away being a Knicks fan. And, and I, you know, again, earlier in the year, we saw the Nets when they were engaged. And then obviously everything pretty much imploded after that with Kyrie and Durant um, and the issues with Ben Simmons. I, I think the Nets are kind of sliding down the slope where they're going to drop six out of seven, seven of it. I, I just feel as though they're, they're already starting to make business decisions and they give up a ton of points. They don't, they're not the best defensive team. Uh, me, myself, I'm going to take the bulls and the points. I'm going to go the opposite way. I like the Nets in this matchup. This reminds me a lot when Anthony Davis was traded to the Lakers mm -hmm. and you had Lonzo Ball, you had J uh, you had Josh Hart, you had Brandon Ingram going over to the Pelicans. I think it's full now with a lot of players like Mikel Bridges and whatnot, Spencer Dinwiddie, who really have something to prove. I think they step it up. They're all going to be playing for contracts next season and actually not so much for contracts, but to have a spot in the starting rotation. The Nets knew before they traded away Duran and Irving that they weren't going to contend for the title. It's just with those two personalities, there wasn't going to be any kind of chemistry. I think that the Nets actually show up tonight. The Bulls, they're still hurt in word that Lonzo Ball won't be returning this year. He hasn't played since January. That Not that that affects the game, but I really like the Nets. They do have something to prove these young guys. I don't. I know they might be a little bitter from getting traded, so I'm going to ride with the Nets on this one. Uh, they dropped eight of uh, 12, it looks like. You know, this was a team in December where they ripped off 10, 11 games in a row. And everyone yeah. thought, okay, here you go. And if you put a futures better than then win, or at least come out of the Eastern Conference, now you're saying to yourself, oh, my goodness, what am I going to do with this one? Um, any other, <laughs> right? Might as well hold on to it or, or maybe rip it up in another week or two. Uh, any other games that jump out tonight? Not so much on the NBA slate. I have a few on the uh, NCAA slate that we can talk about Good. when we get to it. But yeah, otherwise, those are some hot bets. Otherwise, you know, other games, the Wizards game, I don't think I would really touch going against the Knicks. Just, again, two bad teams. Um, I might take the Wizards. Actually, I know you're a Knicks fan, but Wizards getting two at home. I think they might win that game all right. But yeah, let's uh, let's go to some college ball. Yeah, real quick, before we transition into college hoops, uh, and again, Friday edition of BYP, um, with Q, uh, do you guys talk at all with the load management and how in the NBA, you know, it's been a big topic and how maybe it also potentially makes you second guess on what games you might want to bet on or you're thinking about bet on as you start to look ahead. I mean, I had this whole discussion and conversation earlier in the week on BYP where, you know, a guy like John Stockton who came out and criticized a little his management missed, I think, 22 games in 19 seasons. So the NBA is not where it used to be and where it is. And and I, I think there's a section to the rule, like a guy like LeBron at his advanced age, who's logging a lot of minutes. But to me, as a, as a better, it worries me a little bit because, you know, some of these teams that might wrap up, you know, spots in the playoffs, maybe their seedings aren't going to be moved either way you know they're going to rest some players here and there. So how do you guys approach that? 
Yeah. See, this is one of the reasons I don't like betting a lot on regular season NBA. I don't know when guys are going to get rested before the game. I don't know when guys are going to get rested during the game. It affects our lines a lot because we have to really be on the lookout. And we get a lot of our news, believe it or not, via Twitter. Sometimes that's the quickest way that it breaks that say Giannis is going to be out tonight or you have, you know, Clay Thompson is going to be out tonight. So that's really something as, you know, a sports betting app that we have to more than any other sport, I'd say, be on our toes about because they can announce this four hours before the game, three hours before the game, two hours before the game. It affects the odds immensely. You know, Milwaukee could be a 10 point favorite tonight if Giannis was playing. They're not. They're one point favorite. What if you got the Miami Heat earlier in the day at mm-hmm. plus ten? Like you know, you're you're, you're golden for that. So yeah. it is it is something that we really find challenging. It's not a sport I personally love to bet on during the regular season, but I know a lot of people are always canvassing Twitter and seeing the first news they get that one of the star players are out and jumping on a line. Yeah, and if it's on Twitter, it must be legit. It, it has, has to be, be right? right. It has to be. Uh, <laughs> Friday edition of BYP with Q. Ali Moniki joining us again, a host of uh, Nothing But Locks uh, podcast. Check them out online. Of course, follow them on social media, on Twitter, at NBL Podcast. Friday from our good friends over at One With Like Tequila as well. Check them out online, onewithliketequila.com. All right, top 25. You got some really good matchups. Uh, Texas, Baylor, eight and nine. We got West Virginia, Kansas, number three. We got Alabama, Arkansas, uh, um, Arizona, and Arizona State. So kind of a... Uh, pick of the litter, if you will, what games are you highlighting or you want to illustrate uh, on this uh, weekend? Sure. Well, we'll start tonight. You have Xavier, number 20, going up against Seton Hall. Xavier, one and a half point favorite on the road. I know that that's a little iffy of a line. The Pirates at home always is usually a good bet. Mm -hmm. However, I'm going to roll with Xavier. I think that they are up and coming in the Big East. I think the Big East is one of the better conferences. I think they're vastly underrated. You still have Marquette there. You have UConn, who I think UConn's one of the biggest sleeper teams. So I'm riding with uh, Xavier tonight. Tomorrow, I really like Texas Tech to beat TCU. I really haven't been that impressed with TCU. So te- Texas Tech gets one and a half point at home. I'm really going to go for them. You mentioned some of the other games that I like. I'm just going through the schedule right now. Sure. I actually hit the other night. Um, I had UConn covering seven and a half against Providence. So I'm a big, big East better. I covered a lot of the Big East when I was at Fox Sports. They're one of the teams that I really like going against. Another one I would actually say, and I hate betting favorites, but I think Kansas covers as a seven and a half point favorite against West Virginia this week. Agreed. Kansas, they look like they belong right back in the finals. I mean, they are that good. They be they had a big win on Monday night, I believe. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head who they beat. Uh, it was a ranked team, but they looked very good. I think that they have such a strong five. I think they have a very good bench. I'm a big Bill Self fan, so I really like this team to make a deep run in NCA March Madness, and I really like them to cover. West Virginia really hasn't shown me anything this year, and Kansas at home, especially on a Saturday, is really tough to beat. Another team I like, I like Virginia getting three points against UNC. I know I know UNC has been sliding lately, and yeah. I'm going to still ride them, and I'm a UNC fan. And it's a big East matchup. Virginia hasn't been playing well as late. They are still ranked, but I like getting Virginia at home. Maybe North Carolina may pull out the win, but against a big defensive team like, like Virginia, I'm going to take the three points there. I, 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 I'm in with your line of thinking too, with, with Kansas over West Virginia, West Virginia. I mean, look, they live and die by the three They're two and three ATS over their last five. Conversely, Kansas is five and oh, you mentioned they had a couple big wins. It's one of the games I highlighted. They had two big wins over ranked opponents, uh, TCU and Baylor. So uh, they're five and oh, ATS over their last five and they can score. And it's all about the guard play. The yeah. other game that I've kind of highlighted uh, two of them that I like is uh, Texas and and Baylor, a nice eight and nine matchup where if you look at Texas, even though over 28 games, 12 and 16 ATS, uh, their totals typically hit uh, when they're on the road. Uh, Baylor can score a little bit. So I'm leaning towards the over in this game. Uh, And they've Texas had some nice, nice wins. I mean, they, 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 they beat Iowa state, uh, which was a 13th ranked squad. They have very good guard play. And that's something we talked about in the past. Marcus Carr, very good guard average is about 17 and a half. Their forward Timmy Allen gets into the mix. So I'm leaning towards the over on that one. Uh, Do you have a feel either way on Arizona, Arizona state? 
I think Arizona is a vastly underrated team. We see year after year, these PAC 12 schools, they don't get a lot of attention. I obviously see them living in California, yep. but when a game, st- when some games on the weekend start 10 PM Eastern time, I can understand why they don't want them. I'm leaning Arizona on this one. Another game I like, I know Purdue and I'm not high on Purdue come tournament time. I think they're going to be one of the most overhyped team. They are laying seven and a half points at home against Indiana. That's another play. I like I'll take Purdue at home on a Saturday. I like Arizona because of their defense. They're yeah. scored about 80, but they're only giving up about 70. So uh, I'm looking for some uh, values with the owners in that one. Uh, they played very well this year, as you alluded to. I think they're vastly underrated. And to your point with Purdue, they're so one-dimensional. Yeah. Right? Every time we start to build them up, I mean, they have the center, they have the big man. That's a walking double-double. Yeah, yep. uh, I, I almost get the sense as though I have to wait to see what they do in conference play. Yeah before maybe I hammer them come tournament time, because if they struggle a little bit, then I think they're going to be one and done, or maybe they win one game. They get into uh, the field of 32 and then that's it. Um, Let me see what else we got here. Uh, Kansas state, Oklahoma state, Texas A&M, Florida state, Miami, nothing screen. What about Houston and East Carolina, right? We it's, it's almost as though we almost forgot about, Houston, we're talking Purdue, we're talking Alabama, we're talking Texas, we're talking Arizona, we're talking UCLA, and then Houston's sitting there 26 and two in the top ranked team in the country. Houston is probably my favorite team this year come come tournament time. I've always been high on, on Houston. I love the way they play defense. I think they, given the conference they play in, they do often get un, get overlooked. I think that more so than Purdue, they're a team that I can see riding all the way to the final four this year. I'm very high on Houston. And then one other game, St. Mary's and the Zags. Those are always good matchups, right? I mean, uh, St. Mary's just quietly going about their business, but they have a pretty good ranking. Gonzaga, I think, is what? 12th or 13th ranked team, 24 and 5. We talk about the pressure with Purdue. I see. I I feel as though we we have the same conversation. We talk college hoops and Gonzaga. Yep. I agree. And you know what? This Gonzaga squad isn't as good as the Gonzaga squads of the past year. I, they really haven't done anything to impress me. They did, I believe, lose to St. Mary's earlier in the year, if I'm correct, either St. Mary's or B1U was one of those. But they have a lot of losses, Rich. I think, though, at home, that's going to be a toss-up game for me. I believe that – I'm not sure if the spread's out. I know the money line's pretty even both ways with them. I just I, – there's something about Gonzaga being home that I just can't go against them against St. Mary's. If it was on the road, I think I would lead in St. Mary's. But Gonzaga at home, I'm going to take the Zags. So will you go a little more heavier come – conference tournament time do you do you are you more inclined to bet some of the cinderellas the underdogs or you wait for the tournament to come out and then basically go bracket to bracket you know seedings that you feel comfortable with matchups i feel like when it comes to the conference tournaments i always am a big underdog better because you have you know teams that are already locked in the play Mm -hmm. locked in to make the tournament you have these bubble teams that really give it their all because they want to go in so, yes, when it comes to tournament time, I'm definitely all on the underdogs. When it comes to like a Saturday game, I tend if, if I have a, if I see a big home favorite, that's a ranked team. I usually side with that just because you play one thing about college football and college basketball. When you have that home crowd behind you, it just fires you up. Yeah. These are still young kids. Don't forget. So the other team, there's still an intimidation factor. So I tend to lean favorites in conference play at home during the regular season. You know, something kind of off the beaten path, but I uh, spoke about this earlier in the week, uh, week with my guy, Nick Costco from on three sports, who does a really good job covering college hoops and college football. I start to go through the slate of games. And I think he was almost dismayed the fact that when I brought up Alabama, he said, whoa, 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 are we going to get into this Brandon Miller situation that they actually allowed him to suit up and play the other night? They beat South Carolina. I think he had 41. Um, Over time. Yep. Yeah. I, you know, I, my, my thought was when a university comes out and they start to throw around phrases, you know, someone's not a suspect and whatnot. I, I still think the optics, the perception looks bad. You can't have a coach say wrong place, wrong time, because you're guilty of maybe just poor judgment. Um, I don't know if you guys touch on that at all, because I was also thinking, you know, if they get enough pressure and they decide, Hey, we're going to sit this kid come conference tournament time then then you're going to see a major fluctuation with the odds 
Yeah, I see. I, I disagreed with the decision to let him play. I would have at least temporarily told him to take a leave until the investigation is done. It's just, it's not a good look for the school. It shows you put sports above someone's life was taken. Like yes. I want to emphasize that this isn't just like a matter of it was a party gone wrong. This was someone's life got taken away. And I, I don't want to get too much into the details, but I think the university should have had him take a leave of absence temporarily. We've seen people suspended for much other reasons that had no relevance on people's lives. So I don't think I don't agree with the decision. I really look down at Alabama for that. And I think a lot of people share my consensus. Uh, right now, in your eyes, who is the odds on favor to win it all in college basketball? You got to go with the defending champions, Kansas, and they've shown every reason why they, they they belong there. I definitely think this team has all the makings of a Final Four team. I mentioned UConn as a dark horse. They went through mm. a slump in January where they ha were not playing good. I believe they lost six of their last seven, six of seven or seven of eight, something like that. They have really turned it on. I mentioned I had them not only beating, but covering seven and a half points against a ranked Providence team the other day. They beat them by almost 20 points, I believe, was the final score. I really like I really like UConn squad. I'm a Hurley guy, so I love how he Dan Hurley coaches that team. I'm riding UConn as one of my dark horses that make a Final Four run. How about to win the ACC? I'm curious. I know a lot of people are looking at Miami. They're looking at Virginia. You know, I saw big numbers with Clemson, Pitts in there, plus 400. I know I'm 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 a Big East person as well, but I appreciate ACC. Yeah, I do too. Listen, I told you I'm a UNC fan. It's definitely not going to be UNC. I can tell you that <laughs> it's definitely not going to be Duke. I do like Virginia's team. They have been very inconsistent. There's, there, there has been a lot of close games against unranked opponents, but that's how Virginia plays. They slow the pace down. They play a lot of defense. They stretch the clock out. I think that when you look at their coach, Bennett, Tony Bennett, he has, he has final four experience. He has national championship experience. I think when it comes down to the ACC tournament, I'm going to ride with Virginia. All right. Before I let you get out of here, let's, uh, we got to talk a little football for a yeah, second. So um, I, I just love, you know, again, everyone has their own thought on the quarterbacks and Aaron Rodgers peeking his head through to see if there's six more weeks of uh winner. I tweeted <laughs> out. It's almost like we're sitting there waiting for yeah. the white smoke from the Vatican. I mean, I don't know what's going on here, but um You've got Carr and everyone's kind of linking them maybe to the Saints, possibly to the Jets, Lamar Jackson, Baltimore, Daniel Jones. Now these reports come that Daniel Jones really didn't ask for the 40, 45, and it was leaked, which was a piss poor job, by the way, uh, yeah. by uh, the former uh, agents. But that's what they do. We know that. So I'll ask you right now, if you are the New York football giants, would you be comfortable with, let's say, two years, 62? Yes, I would. I think that you also run the risk that if he has an even better year, if you place a franchise tag on him and he has even a better year in his fifth year than he had this past season, what is his price tag going to be after that? I would be very comfortable with that two years extension. Listen, Daniel Jones, he has a, one more playoff win than guys like Kyler Murray that's getting paid way more than him. So that for me would be, I would use the franchise tag on Saquon Barkley and sign Danny Dimes to a short-term two, three-year deal. All right. And then I know I've, I've asked you this over the last several weeks to see if you kind of swayed in your opinion or thought on this. Uh, Lamar Jackson, do you think I, I, I mean, it's funny, you, you we talked about it and I saw that you guys kind of had the same kind of dark horse yeah. sleeper team in Washington. And I mean, look, I think that marriage is broken in Baltimore. And I think now that they make the hire for Washington for Eric the enemy, it could open up. Uh, the offensive game plan, and maybe he would fit that team. Do you believe Baltimore deals away Lamar Jackson? I do, because I think that if you make Lamar unhappy coming into camp, I think if you do another franchise tag with him, there's a good chance he holds out and he doesn't show up. Maybe he comes back a week or two before, but you have a new offensive coordinator. You run the risk of him just not being in sync with the guy. I think that get some prep picks that you can for Lamar. I don't think Lamar wants to be there anymore. It's time to trade him. It's a shame because he is a good talent, but you look at, he's only played 16 games in two seasons. Yep, so yep. you have to take his injury factor into yep. consideration while he's missed 16 games in two seasons. So if I'm Baltimore, I would cut my ties with him. Yeah. I mean, again, he's not the MVP that we saw a couple of years right. ago and only played in 16 once. And then finally, right. uh, who's going to be the quarterback on our center for the Jets come September? 
Ooh, the Jets. I think I think they're going to miss out on all the big guys. I don't think they're going to get Aaron Rodgers. I think he's staying put in Green Bay. I think Derek Carr is going to go to an NFC team. I think you're going to see the Jets stuck with the redheaded Carson Wentz. <laughs> Oh my god. They're, 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 they're like the little brother that, that just gets stuck with the leftovers. So oh, that's they're, horrible. They're it's have like a the, mix of Mike White and Carson Wentz coming. That's like up. the water pistol, Andy Dawn. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um would uh would you guys hit on this week and uh, as always uh just uh drive the traffic to the uh, podcast, uh, yep. give a little promo. Yeah, for, we talked uh, a lot of NBA me. futures, you know, not just the futures uh, for teams winning the Western and Eastern Conference Finals, but we talked awards. I don't think anyone's there to beat the Joker for MVP. Agreed. We talked about potential Coach of the Year candidates. Obviously, Malone leads, leads the charge uh, with Denver. We talked six man of the year, defensive man of the year. And yeah, just talked more about sleeper teams. I think that if the Warriors get a healthy Steph Curry back for postseason, that they're going to make a serious run, but his health is still up in the air. Robert, I told you, likes the Clippers. So yep. we'll see what goes. All right. Awesome. Everyone, don't forget, follow these guys on uh, Twitter. They got the podcast laid out. Uh, you guys are all over the place. I would assume, right? Spotify, yep. Amazon, all, all over those. the place. Yep. Everywhere. Give them a follow. Yep. Give them a follow at NBL uh, podcast. And it's nothing but locks. Allie M does an awesome, awesome job. Hopefully the sun sneaks through uh, out on the West coast. I don't feel, I don't feel bad for you. I don't, I don't, we went from 25 to 35 to 50 and then back down to 40 over the weekend, but I always appreciate you jumping on Friday edition of BYP. We'll do it again next week. Great. Thanks Rich.